Hi, in this video I'm just going to show you how to update the hair mesh from Unreal Engine using Hair Strand Designer. So I've extracted the mask texture from Unreal Engine Stylized Hair Shader here and I'm just tracing over with the hair sets. Um, so you can see I've used the UV image button just under the little heartbeat icon at the bottom middle to bring in that texture and I'm just placing the sets over those changing the parameters such as the length, variation, waviness, spacing and the number of strands so this process takes a little while you can select on each set and drag them around by clicking on them or you can choose the number at the bottom right of the UI to select these sets. You can also right click to deselect any selected sets. If you have a, select, uh, a set selected it will turn orange and that will let you change the parameters of that particular set. If there's no set selected it will affect all the strands that don't have an override. So overrides turn the num the numbers orange which basically means it's going to ignore any global values and there's also some little markers next to those like green ones for the spacing and so on and they'll show up at the bottom right as well next to each number now Hair Strand Designer 1.585, which is this version, is limited to 11 sets, and that's purely just because of performance. The more strands that I tried to show you in real time, the slower the software becomes, and it's already kind of pushed to the limit of it. Uh, I've added an optimized feature that shows you the strands building up in real time and getting more definition and things like that but this is all kind of a little bit of a, a hindsight about how much performance or uh, how hungry the the algorithm is for performance and um, there's a lot of little mathematical tricks used in each strand to make it all conform when it's tapering and to clump um, uh, the waviness and things like that, they all have to be worked out in real time. So because of that, with this version, you have to hold down the button a little bit longer than normal. Instead of trying to like click something multiple times, just hold it down a little bit longer and eventually it will respond. Same goes for if you're entering any numbers. Just imagine that the keyboard uh, has responded to your press and it just takes you know a couple of seconds to show up because of the frame rate. Now you can also solo out sets um, by double clicking on the number, and that will make that will make them um, just show that particular set, and that will speed it up. Okay, so I'm just saving the the hair strand signer file here, just in case I get a crash or anything like that. Now if you do get a crash. And the software restarts it will ask if you want to load the previous file in memory and that will load your last file so nothing's really lost then now i'm just choosing to render these first uh, five sets so the rgb mass deals with root uh, and tip tones as, as well as the variation tones stored in grayscale values in the red channel and we're going to use the, those in Unreal Engine, so process these and just exporting them and then I jump over to Unreal Engine to start making a new shader using the Material Editor. You just give it a little moment, it will flash the save window as it automatically goes through and export those files for you. Okay, so I'm just restarting here just to make sure it loads in the file and just talking about once it reloads, you have to regenerate 
anything because it, it flushes out the texture memory each time. Texture memory is very delicate with this tool. Uh, it was made using Game Maker Studio. Uh, it uses something called surface memory, which is easily lost when you're moving windows around or you spam click it if it's not responding. It just loses stability. Um, hopefully in the future I can probably make this software using some kind of like C++ if I decide to go down that route. Now I'm primarily an artist so I don't really have a massive code knowledge but enough to definitely uh, get by and make this tool. Definitely make improvements in that. Uh, we're in Unreal Engine here and this is the stylized shader pack that I've created for hair. Um, it uses the, the hair shaders built into Unreal and I've just gave access to a whole lot of different features to control like specularity as well as using the, the maps that come out of Hair Strand Designer such as the, the root tip and colour mask. Um, you can see these spaghetti networks are my current shaders and I'm just going to show you how to make up a new shader here. So this is going to be super basic. It's just going to be the textures that we've got out of Hair Strand Designer here. I was bring in the RGB mask, the opacity mask, the normal map, the ID map, and I'm just going to channel these in to relevant parts. Now, there's no opacity, opacity ma mask available in the shader, so you'll see me actually change that here. So they're grayed out, and I have to just change this to masked, as well as change this to hair. And just connect the, you can connect the red channel up or whatever, it, it will still work the same normal map into into the tangent and we're going to do something with the ID map here so I'm using a lerp node lerp nodes basically are like mixers imagine a DJ with disk A on the left and disk B on the right and he wants to control using his little kind of mixer slider now if he wants the record to play on the left, the A side, he changes the the alpha value to zero, right? And he wants the record to play on the right side, he changes it to one, and he want to hear something in between, he changes it to zero point five. And you've got all those values between. Uh, and they're similar to grayscale values where black is zero and white is one. So we can actually use the texture to drive that, and that's what I'm using there. So just now I'm just making an instance of the master material and that means it only gives us access to the, the parameters that we tell it to and we don't have to get into that graph all the time unless we want to improve the shader. So I realized that I need to turn on the two-sided and I'm just checking yeah and I want to control the opacity here so I'm, I'm holding down S and clicking to get a parameter a scalar parameter like a float and I'm using um, the minimum maximum here to go between 0 and 2 so that I can push the opacity further past what it's just given me. It's just given me you know, whatever is in the texture but I want to be able to control it. So you see I've exposed these two parameters and now I can control the opacity. I'm just turning off the post process here to make things a bit faster. My PC often sounds like an airport when it's uh, using Unreal Engine. It's very hungry to look good. So it puts on a lot of post process. Now you see here I'm, I'm taking the red channel from the ID map. Now the ID map is made up of various tones and that, that allows us to bring in even more variation over and above the, the variation that we get from the RGB mask. Now, the red channel of the RB, RGB mask is grayscale. It goes from black to white. It can be used to control two color values. 
and that's what I'm showing you here. So I'm going to take the red channel out. I'm going to get two tones. So the red channel is involved in controlling these two tones. Remember the DJ analogy, A being the left, B being the right, and a value from zero to one, deciding which record to play right. But in this case, it's visual, it's textures. So I've got black on the left and white on the right. And if the control, uh, uh, control tone coming in is white, it's going to play that white tone. Well, if it's black, it's going to play that black tone. And I take the result of that and put it into another verb node. And I'm controlling the red channel of the ID map there to do the same thing again, but I'm bringing in another tone. So that gives us a, the opportunity to bring in some rogue colored strands in certain places. So I save that out and um, now I've got access to three colors in the shader. The two that come from the red channel of the RGB mask. And it's not the colors directly from the texture, but it's the two colors that we tell it here, such as I've gave it black and white and it's being controlled. The mix is being controlled from the red channel of the RGB mask, how it's being mixed, right? It's not to do with the colors because as you can see here, I can customize these colors however I like. So I've got the two variation tones and I've got that rogue tone coming from the ID maps red channel. Again, it's a grayscale image that decides whether to show a new value or leave the original value, A or B. Lerp nodes are great for this kind of uh, mixing. And you'll use them a lot if you're getting into shaders. Um, just really powerful. I recommend messing around with a Lerp node. Put, put a color into A, a color into B, and get a scalar parameter between zero and one, and that will let you mix between these two tones. Useful for a lot of stuff. So as you can see, I'm just tinkering with these values to give you an idea how that's working. Okay, so I've realized I can make even more tones. There's more channels I can extract out of this ID map. It's got red channel, green channel, blue channel. They're all grayscale um, images that can be used to mix in even more tones. So I've got the two variation tones coming out of the red channel of the RGB mask. Now, I've not even touched on the root and the tip tones of this. I'm just showing you the principle behind it. You see, I'm only using that red channel of that RGB mask. And then the ID mask I'm using to bring in even more uh, rogue tones and I've decided to use multiply with that um, mask coming out of the ID map I'm using the alpha channel the alpha value of the color to help control that so I can decide how much I want to come in and out and that keeps it kind of tidy right so I've enabled those and I've just noticed things aren't in order so I realized that I had to add a space to these and just make sure everything's the same. And now these numbers will be in order. Okay, so I've got the black there, the kind of dark brown, the pink and the two blues, right? They're all kind of replacing each other as you go down there. Now the two the two top tones are controlling the 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 base colours based on that red channel coming from the RGB mask. Then the ID map has been used, each grayscale coming from each channel, the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel. They're all black and white images. They all control values 0 to 1, which then lets me bring these rogue colors in based on those. And I'm using the alpha to help decide how much of that to see, because I multiplied the alpha value with those. And again, alpha has been normalized at 0 to 1. And that all seems to work quite well. So I hope you enjoyed that video. And I hope you learned a little bit about Unreal Engine shaders from it. Thanks for watching. Bye.